you think will win? A hungry grizzly or a ripe berry? An angry tiger or a beautiful flower? A huge python or a green bush? The answer's not so obvious. Now you'll see who really controls the jungle and forests. Meet the most dangerous plants on Earth. This is the water hemlock. It grows in North America in swampy areas of fields and meadows. Also, you can find this plant on the shores of rivers and streams. It seems harmless, but it's one of the most poisonous plants in the U.S. Water hemlock toxins can cause critical damage to an adult in 15 minutes, but only if you swallow it. Many people mistakenly confuse it with artichoke, celery, and anise. Despite the dangerous poison, water hemlock is used to cure migraines and intestinal diseases. This plant has caused a lot of damage to livestock. White snake root grows in fields and pastures. When a cow bites it, the plant releases a fat-soluble toxin. This poison gets not only inside the animal, but also into the milk. Young calves who drink the milk also become infected. Poisoned milk is also dangerous for people. The problem is that this plant, native to North America, is one of the longest-lived autumn flowers. Now in modern farms, the poison of this plant is not so dangerous. But on small private pastures, white snake root is the number one danger. We all know two kinds of beans, the ones we eat and the ones that Jack used to get to the realm of giants. In addition to them, there are poisonous ones. These are called castor beans. They contain one of the most dangerous toxins in the world, ricin. As soon as it enters your body, it blocks the production of proteins necessary for life. Without these proteins, your cells stop functioning. The more cells are destroyed, the more your body suffers. The castor bean releases ricin when squeezed. Several beans can cause dehydration, weakness, hallucinations, seizures, and other problems. About seven beans are enough to cause critical damage. So remember what they look like and never touch them if you see them in the woods. One of the most beautiful plants on the planet is also one of the most dangerous. This is oleander. Everything is poisonous in it. The stem, the root, and the pink flower. Even a tiny piece of this plant can lead to severe poisoning. It doesn't need to get inside your stomach to create severe problems. Just a little touch to the juice of the flower causes allergies. And don't try to burn it, as the smoke of a burning oleander has toxic effects too. And now, the most dangerous plant in the world. One touch of it will hurt you for several years. Or you may feel the consequences all your life. The Gimpy Gimpy plant, also called the Queensland Stinger, looks like an ordinary burdock bush. It doesn't look like anything poisonous at all. But if you stand next to this plant, you'll feel suffocation and watery eyes. There are thousands of tiny poisonous hairs on the leaves of this flower. They're so light, they can hang in the air and spread by the wind. So you should put on a gas mask if you want to look at the plant. But if you lightly touch Gimpy Gimpy, you're in big trouble. Some compare one Gimpy Gimpy sting to 30 wasp stings at the same time. Poisonous hairs easily penetrate under your skin and cause irritation and pain. The problem is that you can't pull them out. Wash with soap and water, use some disinfecting ointment, and you'll see that the situation is only worsening. The hairs can't be pulled out of there. They sit there, releasing toxins and driving you crazy. There's no antidote because scientists still don't know what components the toxin consists of. It can withstand cold and hot temperatures. Unpleasant sensations can last for several hours, days, or even months. People who touched the plant said that the pain from the sting returned even after a few years. But if it's impossible to get rid of the hairs, then the only way out is to wait for them to lose their toxicity. But there's another problem here. You can tear off one Gimpy Gimpy leaf with gloves and put it in the laboratory. Dry it and forget about it for a few years. And here it lies in front of you, a withered, almost destroyed leaf. It seems harmless, but it's not. Even after many years, the poisonous hairs remain on the leaf surface and still cause toxin effects. Gimpy Gimpy only grows in Australia. 
It loves the sun and dense green forests. It used to pose a severe danger to tourists and loggers. But now, all places with this plant are marked with a warning sign. At botanical exhibitions, scientists put this plant in a cage so people wouldn't touch it. Rosary peas can be white seeds with a black eye or black seeds with a white eye. You can find these plants in Africa, Asia, Australia, and the Pacific Ocean region. Some species were transported to Florida and Hawaii by people. You could encounter this plant even on city streets. Rosary pea seeds are used in jewelry and some toys. People who wear rosary pea bracelets probably don't know about its seeds' toxicity. Rosary peas, as well as the castor bean, contribute to the destruction of cells. Interestingly, rosary pea seeds are used not only as decorations, but also for healing certain health conditions. This is the only poisonous plant from the list that looks poisonous. You probably won't want to pick it up when you notice it. See this red stem that looks more like an artery or an enlarged nervous system? And those berries are similar to eyes. Doll's eye looks a little creepy. Their internal structure is also as unpleasant as their appearance. Doll's eye has a dangerous toxin. The longer they grow, the more poisonous their composition gets. Doll's eye chemicals have a sedative effect on muscles and hearts. This means that your body relaxes so much that it stops working. You've probably seen this plant in reality or wildlife movies. Venus flytraps are rare representatives of carnivorous plants. Fortunately, they're not as dangerous for humans as for insects. But in any case, you shouldn't stick your finger in them. So here's how they work. The plant opens its mouth. There's a red petal with a fragrant smell in its middle. It's a decoy. A fly or some beetle notices this and decides to try it. They climb inside the flower. But the Venus flytrap doesn't immediately get closed. Tiny sensitive hairs inside the plant count the movements of the fly. If the fly has made more than two movements within 20 seconds, the plant closes its mouth in less than a second. This interval prevents the Venus flytrap from needlessly slamming when some garbage lands there. Then the fly becomes trapped. The bristles on the plant's jaws work like a cage. Prey cannot escape. Then the Venus flytrap injects digestive juice into its mouth, which destroys the fly. Five to 12 days later, the plant opens again and waits for a new lunch. The Venus flytrap can eat flies, beetles, spiders, and even little frogs. Giant hogweed causes the most extensive damage among all plants. It's dangerous not specifically for one person, but for entire forests and fields. Giant hogweed is an invasive plant. It's like a parasite. It multiplies quickly and destroys all other flowers in the area. Insects don't feed on giant hogweed. It's also problematic for people to destroy it, since giant hogweed causes an allergic reaction on the skin. It grows quickly, it's immune to poisons, and lives long. Giant hogweed can reach the height of a one-story house and be deeply rooted in the ground. It releases its seeds, and a light breeze spreads them for miles. Scientists still can't create an effective way to combat it. There's nothing that can defeat giant hogweed in nature. Well, not yet. Nature and evolution always find a balance. So you invite your friend over for a cup of tea. To speed things up, you decide to skip the five-minute steeping time and squeeze the tea bag against the spoon. Your guest jumps off the couch and knocks the spoon off your hands. Turns out when you squeeze a tea bag or tea leaves, you release too many tannins into your drink. Tannins are a class of molecules that are found in many fruits and vegetables, like pomegranates, berries, nuts, legumes, cloves, or vanilla. When you do things the proper way and wait, most of the tannins stay with the plant material. When you squeeze, it causes the same results as oversteeping your tea. It becomes too bitter and can stain your teeth. Besides, draining a tea bag against the cup is a form of poor tea etiquette, just like slurping. Gee, now they tell me. The best you can do is wait for your tea to brew and then leave that bag on a saucer or throw it in the trash can. Don't peel bananas from the stem down. Mm -mm. Do it like the monkeys and go from the bottom up. 
Squeeze the tip of the fruit with your thumb and index finger. It'll split the skin without mashing the banana, and you won't lose even a bit of that potassium-filled fruit. Don't brush your teeth with horizontal movements only. Hold your toothbrush at a 45-degree angle to the gums and go in short strokes back and forth. Tilt the brush vertically and go up and down to clean the inside surfaces of the front teeth. To avoid splashing things around, put a paper plate on your mixer's beaters. It'll be a great temporary cover. When you're cutting a loaf of crusty bread, turn it over and go from the bottom. It'll be easier to slice on the soft side and you won't squish the bread. The right way to hold a pizza isn't flatly like you're used to, but in a U-shape to prevent it from flopping over. Pinch the crust a bit when you pick it up, and all the toppings will stay inside. Don't pour your juice from the box with the opening on the top. Flip it over. When you do it from the top, you'll be able to control the flow and stop it neatly and quickly. You don't have to run around the vehicle looking for the gas tank every time you arrive at the gas station. There should be an arrow on the gas gauge to let you know which side to refuel your car. If you can't squeeze the juice out of a lemon, drop it in the microwave for about 10 seconds. Take it out, let it cool, slice it in half. Now you can get most of it even with your bare hands. The lemon becomes much softer this way. Instead of putting the hair clip wavy side down, flip it over. When you place it wavy side down, it gets a better grip on your hair. You don't have to take aluminum foil out of the package to get a piece of it. Most boxes have a perforated tab on either side. Punch it and take as much foil as you need with the roll inside the box. Don't pour your Chinese takeout out of the paper container. Unfold it carefully, and it will turn into a little plate you can eat out of. Instead of just scrubbing pots and pans, boil some water inside and add a small amount of vinegar. Remove it from the heat and drain the vinegar down the sink. The gunk will come off easily. Rub half a lemon around the bottom and sides of your cookware for extra shine. Sprinkle the board with lemon juice, and you won't have to cry when cutting onions. You can also try dropping them in the freezer for 15 minutes or slice them underwater. This way, the sulfuric compounds that make you tear up won't reach your eyes. Never defrost meat at room temperature or under hot water. In these conditions, the bacteria that were in there before multiply. Yeah, they learned that in school. The safest way is to plan your cooking ahead and put the meat in its packaging in a pan in the fridge. If you can't wait that long, plug up the sink and put your frozen food in cold water from the tap. Heat is transferred faster through water than air. When trying to correct a silly mistake or hide something after you've changed your mind, don't just scribble lines over your handwriting. It'll still be perfectly readable. Write some random letters on top of what you're trying to hide. Now no one will be able to read it. Don't spread your food over the plate evenly when microwaving it. The center takes longer to warm up, and the edges might get burnt. Leave an empty round space in the middle, and the entire meal will be perfectly warm at the same time. Instead of trying to pull the bit of the knot passing through the main knot, tap it with a spoon or a hammer, then twist the loose end. When you loosen it, push it through the knot. It should untie easily. To peel garlic quickly, hit the whole head with your palm against the top of the bulb. When you separate the cloves, put them in a bowl and cover it with a lid or another bowl. Shake it well for 15 seconds. The cloves will slam against the sides of the container and each other and get separated from their skins. Stop dipping your hand into a bag of popcorn, especially if you're sharing it with others. Rip the bag on the side and voila! You can pick it gracefully. If you have standard in-ear headphones, don't wear them straight down with a cable hanging on the front. Instead, loop them over the ear, and they won't fall out so easily. Don't try to clean a blender by scrubbing it. Fill it with water and add some dishwashing liquid, then blend it. Holding the steering wheel at 12 o'clock or 10 and 2, like you've probably been taught, won't give you the best control over your car. The right way to do it is to position your hands at 9 and 3. This way, the airbags will be able to fully inflate in case of an accident. Stop using cotton swabs to clean your ears. They can damage your hearing. In fact, you need some wax in there to waterproof the ear canal. You can clean around the outside of the ear with cotton swabs, but that's it. Don't buy unripe avocados and put them in the fridge waiting for them to get ready. Fresh-picked avocados need room temperature to ripen within 3-6 to six days. 
Instead of putting chocolate in the fridge, store it in a cool, dry place. The temperature and humidity of the fridge make chocolate flavors dull. Plus, it can absorb odors from the fridge or get a white coating. If you keep it in the pantry, it'll stay stable for months, if it lasts that long. Certainly not around me. If you've broken enough nails adding new keys to the keyring, try doing it another way. Staple removers have teeth that are thin enough to slide between the rings. Use one of those to spread the key ring apart and add as many keys as you need safely. To cool down a beverage in less than 15 minutes, wrap a damp paper towel around the bottle before you drop it in the freezer. The water from the towel will quickly evaporate and cool. It'll help the surface of the bottle chill faster than the air in the freezer would do alone. To defrost ground beef faster, flatten it, place it in a separate plastic bag, and seal tightly. You can also drop it all in one bag and then take a long chopstick, ruler, or anything with a straight edge to divide it into sections. When ready to thaw, you can break off a section and place it in cold water. It'll be good for cooking in less than half an hour. The right way to use a toilet seat cover is to put the side with the flap towards the front. This way, it'll fit better and prevent particles and germs from collecting there. Don't keep matching bedding separately. Fold your fitted sheet, flat sheet, and pillowcase in a rectangle and tuck the bundle inside a matching pillowcase. It'll save you a bunch of time you'd spend putting together a set. Plus, it makes your closet more organized. To prevent sticky notes from curling where the adhesive is, don't tear them bottom to top. Go from one side of the pad and pull the note to the other. When you're heating a pasta, rice, or vegetables, cover the dish with a damp paper towel. Since you normally cook them in water, these meals need some moisture to taste good after reheating. You can also put a glass of water in the microwave with pizza. It'll keep the crust fresh and crispy. You're walking down the beach toward the water, but something feels different today. The water is bright green, and your nose gets filled with a recognizable pungent stench of rotting eggs. Should you probably come closer to check this unusual phenomenon? Mm -mm. Stop right now until it's too late. What you see is called a harmful algal bloom, also called algae bloom, and approaching it is a very bad idea. This bloom contains algae that can produce dangerous toxic gases. That's what makes previously popular touristy places deserted and outright treacherous. You can come to a sea or lake beach and spot something that looks like blue-green foam floating on or just beneath the surface of the water. Or it may resemble streaks of bright green paint. Some blooms, called red tides, can color the water brown or red. Anyway, once you notice something like that, try to stay away, keep in check that curiosity of yours, and don't go exploring. When algae decompose, Pockets of toxic hydrogen sulfide gas are trapped under the crust. If you unknowingly step on such a pocket, you'll set the gas free and can accidentally inhale it. It's enough to say that this is likely to end tragically. On some beaches, bulldozers pile up the algae into dump trucks and bring it to special centers. There, workers dry the seaweed and get rid of it. But sometimes, these centers have to be temporarily closed. Algae mixed with sand and mud smells so awful that local people can't sleep at night because of the stench. There are three types of dangerous algae that can gather into harmful algal blooms. Cyanobacteria, dinoflagellates, and diatoms. All of them are made up of minuscule floating life forms that use sunlight to create their own food. The blue-green algal blooms are caused by cyanobacteria. They produce dangerous toxins that destroy nerve tissue. It can get so bad that water treatment plants might be unable to get rid of the toxin. Then, local people are recommended not to use tap water. Dinoflagellates and one diatom species are responsible for creating red tides. They occur mostly in ocean bays. For a red algal bloom to form, the water has to be warm, salty, and rich in nutrients. Such blooms release a huge amount of different toxins. In Texas, red tides used to happen once in a decade. Now they occur every three years. In Florida, red algal blooms appear every year. Long, skinny diatoms can also produce toxic substances harmful to people. Even worse, if some shellfish, like razor clams, eat a lot of this plankton, they become toxic too. That's why cooking them for dinner can lead to a disaster. It's one of the reasons why marine waters are usually monitored. If toxin levels become too high, 
beaches get closed for shellfish harvesting. Harmful algal blooms can last for several days to a couple of months. They rid the water of oxygen, causing marine life to disappear. But it gets even worse when microbes start to decompose the algae at the end of the bloom. They consume even more oxygen in the process, and no fish can survive it. This creates huge areas of water almost totally devoid of oxygen and any kind of plant or animal life. Harmful algal blooms appear in the regions with too many nutrients in the water. And the most common of these nutrients comes from agriculture and other industries. Plus, winter monsoons have become warmer and now carry more moisture. This allows algae to gather in huge blooms. Some of them get so gigantic that the thick green swirls can be seen from space. Not all algal blooms are harmful, though. Some of them just add a terrible taste to the water, change its color, or produce revolting smells. Unfortunately, you won't be able to tell toxic algae from totally harmless kinds, judging only by their appearance. Algae aren't the only organisms that look deceitfully harmless. Here are other marine inhabitants you should never ever touch. The Arukanji jellyfish, found in Australia, looks tiny and totally innocent. But appearances are deceitful, and this baby, the size of a human thumbnail, is actually lethal. During stinger season, which lasts from November to May, tons of beaches get closed because of these itsy-bitsy creatures. What makes the jellyfish particularly dangerous is their miniature size. You will simply fail to notice one while swimming. Oops. The blue-ringed octopus looks not just harmless, it's breathtakingly beautiful. But don't let the looks fool you. You wouldn't want to disturb this relatively small 8-inch long creature. It carries enough venom to bring down 26 adults within mere minutes. And once the animal feels threatened, well, you can probably guess the outcome. At the same time, when left alone, the octopus is absolutely docile. The infamous box jellyfish, named for its cubic body shape, lives in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Stay clear from a creature with a squarish bell and long, dangling tentacles. And even if you see only a single tentacle, without the jellyfish attached to it, don't come close or touch it. The box jellyfish can grow up to 10 feet, and each of its tentacles has about 500,000 microscopic harpoons to inject venom. Unlike other jellyfish, box jellyfish are hunters. They can latch onto you by wrapping their slender tentacles around your limb or body. With how dangerous their venom is, it won't be a pleasant experience. The crown of thorn starfish got its name because of the venomous spines covering its entire body. The second largest starfish in the world, it can grow up to 20 inches across. They feed on corals, and they eat a lot. Just one hungry starfish can finish off more than 100 square feet of corals within a year. The creatures also tend to have loads of babies. They produce more than 500 million eggs at a time. Really, an overachiever. The fairly small blue-spotted ribbon-tail ray mostly lives in the tropical Indian and western Pacific Oceans, near coral reefs. No more than 14 inches across, the creature has a striking color pattern. It's yellow, with electric blue spots on its body and several blue stripes on its tail. But however pretty this animal is, keep in mind that it's also dangerous. It can injure you with venomous tail spines. You can come across lionfish in the South Pacific Ocean and in the Caribbean Sea. Despite what most people think, it's okay to cook these fish. These creatures present real danger when they are alive. You can get accidentally stung by their needle-sharp fins that contain venom. If you're an enthusiastic shell collector, you should know the cone snail by sight. About 4 inches long, the snail looks cute and innocent. But this look is deceitful, especially if you're dealing with a tropical species. Imagine finding a pretty shell and picking it up. You aren't afraid, your diving gloves seem to offer perfect protection. But cone snails have tiny needle-like protrusions they can deploy from their mouths. And those are full of lethal neurotoxins. These harpoons can easily get through your diving suit's fabric. But the worst thing is that the venom contains painkillers. You won't even know you've been stung. The flower urchin got to the Guinness Book of Records as the most dangerous sea urchin on the planet. These creatures live in the Indian and Western Pacific Oceans. And while a flower urchin may look like something you'd love to see in your aquarium, never ever touch it. 
flower urchins have enough venom to make your holiday extremely unpleasant. Or short. The reef stonefish, the world's most venomous fish, knows how to camouflage. Oh goody. It can blend into the surroundings so well, you won't even notice it even if you're paying attention. This makes it all too easy to step on the fish. Once the creature feels threatened, like when you're accidentally trying to crush it, it extends the venomous spines growing along its back. The more pressure, the more venom the fish produces. The creature remains dangerous even taken out of the water. The Indonesian needlefish isn't venomous, doesn't have sharp teeth, and will most likely stay as far away from you as possible. The danger lies in the fish's body shape. After all, it wasn't called the needle for nothing. Needlefish swim near the surface. In case of danger, they launch themselves out of the water, and their speed can reach 37 miles per hour. Their long, sharp jaws turn the fish into flying spears. The striped surgeon fish got its name because of the spines growing near the base of its tail. When the fish feels in danger, it moves the tail and reveals these scalpel-shaped spines. If you don't hurry to move away, you can get several nasty cuts. Keep in mind that some species are also venomous. Hey, have a nice day at the beach, y'all!